Welcome everyone to Living with the Times. We are getting close to Tisha B'Av and I would like to give over a teaching that connects the month of Av to the month of Tishrei. We might on the surface not see many connections at all but I'm going to very quickly go through a list of very, very essential and deep connections between the month of Av and Tisha B'Av and the month of Tishrei, which has all of the holidays of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Hoshana Rabbah, and Simchas Torah. So the first one is a teaching from the Slonim Marebi, the idea that from Yud Zayin B'Tamuz, which was a fast day uh, at the beginning of what's called the three work, three weeks, and the fast day of Tisha B'Av, which is this coming Wednesday night and Thursday. So there is actually 22 days. It's three weeks, but Tisha B'Av is the 22nd day. And the Son of Rebbe reminds us that there is another cycle in the Jewish year that also has 22 days. And that's between Rosh Hashanah and Simchas Torah. Here in Israel, outside of Israel, Simchas Torah would be the 23rd day. But here in Israel, Shemini Yitzharet and Simchas Torah are the same day. So the Son of Rebbe explains, so what is the connection between these two cycles of 22 days? So he, he brings a, a, a metaphor, a parable. He says that when a person wants to draw a picture. So first they make the outline and then later they fill in the outline with, with, with color and shade and depth. So he said that's the relationship between the month of Av and the month of Tishrei. That during these 22 days where we go deep into reflection and contemplate Jewish history and everything that has happened to us. This forms the outline of the, the readiness and the openness to be ready for something new in a new year. So the 22 days of the three weeks is becomes the vessel for the new light that will come down in the month of Tishrei during all of the holidays. So this is a very, very beautiful idea, but it's, it's strengthened by actually the first word of the Torah, Bereshit. Bereshit, you can permute the letters in many, many different ways, and each one has great meaning. So you, if you permute the letters of Bereshit, so you get be Aleph Tishrei. On the first of Tishrei, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Actually, Rosh Hashanah is on the sixth day of creation, but it is the first of Tishrei. And it's called the first day of creation because that's when human beings were created. But if you take those same letters, they spell out Av Tishrei, the month of Av and the month of Tishrei. So already in the first word of the Torah is hinted that there's a very, very deep connection between the month of Av and the month of Tishrei. So there's another connection. We're just going to go through a whole series of connections. The next one is on Tisha B'Av, we read the Book of Lamentations, written by Jeremiah, Yirmiyahu. In Hebrew, it's called Eicha. And the first word is Eicha, which means, how could it be? How could it be that Jerusalem, the, the, the most beautiful, spiritual city in the world, the, the city of, 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 of godliness, could fall so low and be destroyed. And so we say, so what's, what's the connection with, with Tishrei? 
Well, on the sixth day of creation, which is the first of Tishrei, Baal of Tishrei, which is Rosh Hashanah. So that's when Adam and Eve, by tradition, ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And right afterwards, it says that they, they then realized that they were naked and they tried to cover themselves up. And they heard God walking in the garden and they tried to hide. And God calls out, Ayeka, where are you? Now, of course, God knew where they were physically, but it means, where are you holding? What have you done? And as is known, the word Ayeka is actually the same word as Echa, same word that is the Book of Lamentation. It's just the, the valorization is different. So this is also a deep connection that the, the breaking that happened on Rosh Hashanah is, is connected to the breaking of, of Tisha B'Av. Now another theme that we have that connects Av and Tishrei is, of course, the ninth day of Av is the most important day of the month of Av. And nine always represents the nine months of pregnancy. We know that from the famous song that we sing at the end of the Pesach Seder, Echad Mi Odea. Who knows one? Who knows two? So when you get to nine, who knows nine? Tisha Yarche Leida, the nine months of pregnancy. And according to tradition, Mashiach is born on Tisha B'av. Now, whether that means literally, because there have been many Tisha B'avs and Mashiach has not come, but certainly the sages were trying to teach us that, that out of the destruction, out of the, the, the lowest point of the year, we're sitting on the floor with just candles, and it's, it's figuratively the lowest point of the year, but from that will come redemption. From a people that cry for the destruction of the temple even 2,000 years later, the redemption will come. So what does this have to do with the month of Tishrei? Well, the month of Tishrei is a month of rebirth. It's a new year, Rosh Hashanah, ahead of the year. But it all has to do with giving birth to ourselves again. After the whole month of Elo, where we prepare for Tishrei. But the idea on a deep spiritual level is not just that the, the time is re being renewed and it's a new year, but it's a time for us to renew ourselves, to give birth to ourselves. And this number nine, which are the months of pregnancy, which are connected to the idea of Mashiach being born on Tisha B'av, is connected to the sound of the shofar. Because all three sounds of the shofar, tikkia, actually, the, the, excuse me, three sounds, tikkia, shvarim, trua, and then we do another tikkia. But each one of them is based on nine. The shvarim, is, uh, uh, excuse me, the trua are nine staccato sounds. Do, 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 do. It can be more than nine, but it has to be a minimal of nine staccato sounds. The shvarim is three sounds. Do, do, do. But each one has to be three counts. So three times three is also nine. And the tekiah is just one blast. And that also has to be a minimum of, of nine. So all three sounds of the shofar are based on the number nine. And even more than that, we, when we blow series of the shofar blast, they're in series of nine. 
Tekia Shvarim Trua Tekia. Tekia Shvarim Trua Tekia. Tekia Shvarim Trua Tekia. Nine. And then we do Tekia Shvarim Tekia. Tekia Shvarim Tekia. Tekia Shvarim Tekia. It's all in nines. To give us this idea of giving birth to a new year, a new, a new self. So this is a very, very deep connection. This is what the Slonim meant that the nine days of Av and, and the whole three weeks of this 22 day period is the outline of the new year and, and Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Rosh Hashanah Rabbah, Simchat Torah. Then we fill it in. We fill in the colors. Now, the constellation of the month of Av is called the Aryeh, the lion. The astrological constellation is called the lion, Aryeh. And it's given over that the four letters of Aryeh spell out the four of the holidays of Tishrei. The, the Aleph, well, actually with Elul. The Aleph is Elul, the month of Elul, which begins with an Aleph. The Resh is Rosh Hashanah. The Yud of Aryeh is the, te- is the tenth, Yud is ten, which is the tenth day of Tishrei, is Yom Kippur. Yom begins with the Yud. And the last letter of Aryeh, the lion, is a He, which is the last day of Sukkot, Hoshana Rabbah. So again, you hear, you see this, this great connection between the month of Av and the month of Tishrei. Also, the sense of the month of Av is hearing. What's this connection with the month of Av? Is we're told that the, the archetypal event that happened on Tishabav which led to later the temples being destroyed on the same day, the, uh, the ninth of Av, was that's when the spies came back from spying out Eretz Yisrael after 40 days, and they gave an evil report, and they told the people, it's a beautiful land, but we're not going to be able to conquer it. The, the people there are too strong. And the people, their hearing wasn't rectified. They, they should have listened to Yoshua and Kala that said, yes, we can do it. Of course we can do it. God promised us. Of course we can do it. But they didn't listen properly. And so the month of Av is the sense of hearing has to be fixed. So how do we fix our hearing? Well, one of the ways is by hearing the shofar. That is the mitzvah. The mitzvah is to hear the sound of the shofar. So again, another very deep connection. One more connection is in the Mishnah of Tanit. It says there were no two more joyous days in the year than Tuba'av and Yom Kippur. Tuba'av is the 15th of Av, happening just six days after Tisha B'Av. And it was a very, very joyous day when the Young maidens went out into the vineyards dressed in white, and the men followed, and matches were made, and the Mishnah says there was no more joyous day, but the other one was Yom Kippur. Why is Yom Kippur so happy? Well, if God is forgiving us, is atoning for us, pardoning us, what could be more joyous Okay, we're fasting, but God is allowing us to be forgiven, giving us a a new chance. What a joyous day. So here we have, again, a connection between the month of Av and the month of Tishrei. And so we're about to go in to Tisha B'Av, but there's always a Tuba Av after Tisha B'Av. And... When we're sitting on the floor on Tisha B'av, we we have to remember that from every fall will come a rise. Sheva yipol tzadik v'kam. Seven times a righteous person will fall, but they get up. 
And so Bezrat Hashem, this last few days before Tisha B'Av, the Jewish people will be able to get up and fix the world, which has been our mission from the time of Avram, and it will be our mission in, 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 until the time of Mashiach. And all of the downs should only propel us to reach the highest heights.